right, so I'm here visiting um, some old friends at OA, Organics Alive. Um, and, you know, ironically, um, the first tea I ever bought, when it wasn't even these guys that were running it, a different crew, um, in the early 2000s, when I was brand new to compost tea and had never heard about it, I bought the original OA tea at a grocery store up in Redway, California. And that was a big transformative moment for me. And of course, um, they've worked with leaders, like in the worm farming industry, like George Hahn of Worm Gold. And I'm with Eric. Eric, what's your name? Eric Sykes. Eric Sykes. And Eric and I actually go back because uh, he's done booths at the Heirloom. So John might have already toured their booth. You may have seen them in one of the Growing Your Greens episodes. But he was neighbors with Boogie Brew back in the day at Heirloom. And we are an abused breed is what we were just discussing with the fertilizer industry and trying to keep it real and do things naturally versus the Dedrient companies who can lawyer up and have all this money. So I'm very excited about um, a new product line. The OA have worked really hard with Les Petits Fonctionnaires, the petty bureaucrats in this state of California um, because they don't make the mad money to... Um, you know, to lawyer up and get new products registered. And he was telling me that they actually worked to create a whole new cat category with CDFA. So Eric, why don't you tell, oh, before that, John asked me to ask everyone who's here, what is your top tip for killer soil, for a living soil, for a, something that's alive? I mean, the very name, Organics Alive. If you could, I know it's a tough, it's a brutal, because I can't answer it. One question, for me, I have a stoner-proof answer, vitamin L, the love, you know. To me, that's the most important. But what would be, or at least one of your top tips for making, being able to make love to good soil biology? Yeah. You know what? From day one, we've preached diversity. Yeah. Um, that's been our key. If you're talking about living biology, you want the right diversity. The you know that microorganisms are strength in numbers. You want to pile up as many good guys as you can. So, so there's there's no one ingredient. Well, the no no one ingredient because there's so many different microbes that are involved in a living soil system that they're all crucial and vital. So we must protect those with you know within our soils of the earth and you know you name it. Those microorganisms they're 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 the most important on the planet. So that's his top tip: preserve the microbes. Think of the smallest life forms. They are your heroes. They are your warriors, not the warriors that you get with hydro gardening techniques, right? Absolutely. You know you can uh, you cannot replicate replicate what has already been created and, and, and what, what, what is happening in the forest and under our feet right now and within our garden systems it's our, it's our duty to try to make it to perform at such a high level that we can put in the systems that replicate you know by giving it a tea by giving it compost by giving it uh, food sources for those biology for those microorganisms but we're going to be running a system so charged that we're going to also want to have to add some extra nutrient value to feed these plants because we're working with a plant that loves to eat and has a short life it has a short lifespan as well if you think about it you know we're one of the few crops that aren't just seasonal we're not just working once a year as a, we can get three four rounds multiple rounds in a year run multiple year, uh, rooms be harvesting you know every two weeks in some cases in a commercial setting so yeah we're you know we're a unique plant industry in and of itself the way we need to really push them push them but we want to go as organic as possible how many of your customers do that the light depths try to get multiple crops per year pretty much all of them now you really have to be if you want to be in in the market yeah you're going to want to do a depth run and, and do a full a full season yeah we do have some of the farms that are so they're so great at keeping the natural cycle and doing full seasons yeah that's absolutely still very important you know because you can't do uh, two acres necessarily uh, indoors so some of these larger um, operations yeah they're going to be full term outdoor using the natural light you know planting in the spring harvesting in the fall but but then, like I said, once you get into the, the mixed light, you get the new greenhouse technology that we have mm -hmm. so you can run year round, you know, um, basically is, is really great. You know, guys like Eric Branstead really bringing forth the technology to, and, and the knowledge to growers so that we can succeed in, in what he calls the hostile environments. And, you know, yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. So now we can grow basically anywhere, any time of year and uh, get multiple harvests off. That's so Eric Branstead, remember that name, folks? I'm going to make a note of that. Uh, he, he's, he's here. Yeah, shout out to Eric, definitely. He taught me a lot about running the greenhouses that we know, and he's been definitely pushing.
teaching the knowledge. Was he here? Yes, he was. He's one of the speakers. One of the speakers. Okay, so that is a name with a brain worth picking. Absolutely. Yeah, light Depp, light Depp Greenhouse, light Depp Eric. He's they're the, they're the men when it comes it comes. He's the man when it comes to that. And you feel at this event you're almost deprived having to be a vendor here while everyone's being good students next door in the auditorium. Um, I've been blessed with uh, the opportunity to meet so many people being here at the booth. So all, every conversation that I've had, I've been able to learn from too. Um, you know, and I get to pop my head in there and also get some knowledge. How long have you been associated with craft cannabis? Craft cannabis? Uh, wow, I guess you'd say started my first couple plants in '98. Um, yeah, you and I go back about the same time. Yeah, and then we started Organics Live, uh, the label in 2004, um, with our with the worm casting bags and and um, bringing the tea to market. Uh, so we had our, our bio extractors and mix kits. Yeah, you were the first tea. You were literally for me. My experience in a grow store being introduced to tea was OA. Loyalty over royalty, folks. Don't forget who put, spearheaded the educational movement. And I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but am I correct in assuming that you spend a lot more of your time, energy, and resources educating people than you do making a buck off of them? Yes, 100%. I mean, that's our forefront. You know, we've been doing this for a long time. The very beginning, we walked into grow root grow shops and we'd brew up 60 gallons of tea, hand out a gallon to everybody. They'd run off, put it into their garden and run back and say, what in the world was that? Because they had never, they were using uh, potting soils, you know, and different dry amendments, but they weren't adding the biology to break it down. So finally, we were introducing living, active microbes, you know, that was time sensitive. We were telling people, oh, you can't even put this in the fridge. You know, we had to, we were the first ones bringing that education. I can't tell you how many times I still answer that question. Infuse it and use it before you lose it, folks. You know, make that fresh infusion really count. Yeah, and then um, working through that biology and learning the benefit and introducing that was just, you know, at first speaking a foreign language and now people really, you know, being here, we're really understanding the importance of having the microbes and how to keep them living within our peat cocoa blends that we're using and how to get those into a soil, you know, like to behave like a living soil. And then also if if you are in, in native soil to keep that soil alive and, and thriving that way you're not just using the dead treants and killing everything in there yeah I mean dead treants they kill soil life that's why we call them that so yeah let's uh, let's launch right in uh, if you could look at the camera and tell our audience about these exciting new products you have we might even have to uh, collaborate with you or at least do a link or something you know and tell people like if you want Absor fast absorption. This is beyond. He's telling me because the first thing I asked Eric was, "Oh, is this a cool top dressing?" Which I'm always in favor of using top dressings at the right time. Obviously, these products would not mostly be used early on in veg, or some of this is tuned for veg. You can use this at planting, at transplant. I would. I put a little bit of granular. I make my whole drop about a gram of granular right in the root zone and put my plant right into that and then backfill. And no risk of burn compared to deadrians. No, no risk of burn. Uh, speaking of which, I'm distracted by this jar. Yeah, speaking of burn. Mmm. Yeah. Mind if I take a sniff? Absolutely. Take or a you sniff. you hold the mic. Yeah. yeah, this yeah. The, um, Why don't you hold the mic? I'm going to stop dominating. Yeah. Eric's going to describe to you this while I enjoy some, some, some sniffage. Yeah. They, some well, flavors. That's where proof is in the pudding is what we say. That <laughs> yeah, was Exactly. Proof is in the pudding. Everybody here has brought that pudding. The terpene proof is in the ter... Oh my God. That is some terpene proof. <laughs> oh, that will sell some OA. Yeah. Oh that was man, a, that yeah. That's your honest reaction too. Oh, I like that. Oh man, yeah. I appreciate that. Wow. So that was grown in a cocoa medium um, indoors uh, wow. under LED. So this was a, this was not done with um, you know, like a sun-grown outdoor or even a greenhouse. This was done with a high-tech approach with like a media that is mostly tuned for deadrients, but they did it with this. Make it uh, this is the best sales tool ever. This is better than that sexy picture, by the way. The, the, um, the glands on that are gorgeous, you know. That's some weed porn right there, for sure. I love it. No heavy metals, 100% soluble powders, carbon-based. But this, to me, is when I'm... And you're telling me that this was done in, in, in mostly inert media to begin with? 
Yes, um, it's, yeah, cocoa. Like, they call it a kind of a living cocoa blend because they're adding some amendment to it. Uh -huh. But, you know, it's, that's the debate right now. Whether right, you right. Yeah, but we were, we, we touched on that yesterday during one of the um, speakers, during one of the internet, and there's some confusion. There's a gray area. What is a true living soil? What is a soilless media? Where do you bridge the gap between them? Uh, you know, a, a picture is a million words. Well, a whiff. Yes. A whiff is a bazillion <laughs> boogie buzzwords. Yeah, yeah. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Tell our audience about this some more. This is the veg. This is the veg. So what we do is um, our, our trip through biology has taken us all the way down to which bacteria actually creates nitrogen, potassium, or phosphorus. So we have one that creates each specific uh, element. And so by feeding that by that bacteria, a couple natural ingredients, we're then able to get the NP and the K. So it starts off as a liquid and then we slowly dehydrate that and it becomes the dry soluble powder. So this is literally gut and skeleton of bacteria with a nutrient molecule sitting in that carbon that, that is the wow. bacteria. So when we give this, so it's a fully soluble powder. If you want, you can open that up and kind of feel what the powder. Do you mind if I no, do absolutely. that? Or do, you, or do you have some in both? That's here? actually the, um, the uh, All right, I'll compost. open it up. Yeah, give it a little open. All right. So while he's um, talking to you, I'm going to do that because I am fascinated. I really am. Yeah, fully soluble. It goes through your injectors. Goes through your lines. Are you serious? Oh, absolutely. Yep. Wow. Won't clog anything. Beautiful. Yeah. And it says recycle me. I love Correct. the packaging. They get such attaboys for doing this. Yes. That's epic. It's um, yeah. everything's post-consumer recyclable that we do. Wow. Now, if I wasn't mistaken, that would look like a bag of dedrients. It does. It, it, <laughs> you know what it, I mean? It, it just has that synthetic vibe about it. it but this is a product from. This was made from microbes. This is the future right here. This is awesome. It is. It truly is the future right there. Um, the nutrients sitting in carbon. So, the, you know, the plant loves carbon and it says, thank you very much. I'll take that. And it doesn't have to waste any energy in order to bring in the nutrient. There's no other um, I see. ion exchange. Very, very efficient. That's why it's beyond any top dressing. Yeah. And so yeah. you can put that in any tank mix. You can even sprinkle it on the soil and just water it in, you, you could say. But um, yeah, this. This is wild. The pink. I can't believe it. And it's carbon based. Carbon so those based. Car the carbon digest in OATs and in your living soil are going to feast on this carbon base. Exactly. This, this is so, so cool. Biology friendly. It hits like a synthetic because the nutrients available and ready to be uptake. It doesn't need any further bacterial breakdown like a normal organic right, amendment exactly. would. I'm always telling people with top dressings, make sure you get in there and, and soak them in with a rich compost tea, with a vermi tea. Exactly. You know, um, but this actually sidesteps that for you because that process has been done for you and now they've actually crafted a dry dehydrated from that product yeah you can almost feel it already it's probably safe enough to consume yeah it could be yeah it's wow it, there's no bacteria course, yeah. in it it's uh it's oh yeah it it's doesn't taste synthetic stabilized. at all it looks so synthetic and it tastes so benign that passes the Josh taste test right there. That's it. That, that is amazing. Now, wh which one is this? This is the... Uh, this is our VP. Okay. So this is actually our brand new product. It's oh, a okay. this zero is the 10 2. Okay. So somebody who has a, who takes a soil sample and they say, okay, we're high in nitrogen and we're high in potassium. Bloom, bloom formula, of course. Yep. Yeah. All we need is that. But like I said, per a soil test, we can actually blend and, uh, and have it have the nutrients applied to the exact proportion per the test, okay. right? You so you get really scientific with this stuff and it's chemical free folks. You're not supporting the chemotocracy. No. That's fantastic. Yeah. The amount of energy input that it takes to create the fertilizer alone is very low. It is like literally can run on a 120, you know, just a normal house plug. When you make this stuff. Yeah. It, so it, it's a input. low energy intensive process. Very. The manufacturing of your product. Yes, it's very green. Um, wow. It's actually, uh, yeah, so that, that's, a, that's a really nice feature about it. Then we have a couple, so we keep it in a liquid form as well. When we keep it in the liquid, it retains the sulfur. And that, kind of one of the talks earlier was talking about how sulfur is mainly the fourth nutrient, or actually it could go nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus, potassium, you know, ah, kind of a thing. But okay. so it's a very important nutrient for us to be using in, in the systems, um, naturally occurring in the soils, and it helps with uh, resin production and as well as terpene. As this, well. this is more concentrated and this has got to be better bang for your buck, right? The, the dry one? Correct. So the yeah. liquid is mainly just an additive. Use that once a week to okay. get your sulfur to, to make sure that you have it available. I see. To spike your sulfur. So liquids still have their place. Correct. Yep. But they're not, but growers don't have to 
guilt trip themselves that they're going to have a mountain of plastic jugs. Exactly. They're using they're using this as a concentrate. So this really isn't a liquid fertilizer. This is a concentrate. Exactly. It's a booster. Yeah. Soil Syndicate. When did you come up with that? Ah, that's our new crew that we have rolling right now with uh, with Cure Soil and Humankind in Oregon. So what we're able to do is bring a three-tier testing where we, we scope the soil uh -huh. and then we also can do a plant sap test as well as the soil analysis and then blend all of that information and cater it straight into the OA products for commercial scale so that you're not wasting money on dumping a bunch of phosphorus that you may already have available in the soil. It's just going to take time to okay, loosen yeah. up. So it says here the soil syndicate data gathering process, a three-tier sampling, soil microscopy, plant sap and mineral balance, soil syndicate remedy process, data analysis and recommendations, a complete living compost introduction, microbial fermentation byproduct, derived nutrition balance, that's this, and then um, soil syndicate ground consulting full service. So these guys, they have brains worth picking, all right? If you want, if you're a pro and you want your bros at soil syndicate to tell you how to grow even more like a pro, these are the guys right here. So again, they find this on Organics Alive's website, a link, a link to this. Yep, what is the website? Uh, OrganicsAliveGarden.com. We have all the information there. Okay. Yep, definitely. Please support Organics Alive. I mean, seriously, if it wasn't for them, I never would have found worm gold, and I never would have found compost tea. And those things were life-changing, all right? Loyalty over royalty right here, all right? These guys have been keeping it real. Josh this is, is a good gonna, guy. This is going to be over 20 years now, man. This is 20 we, years. Yeah. So, you know, we all here speak the same OGs language. OGs, and it's all about the love, yeah. and we've yeah. been here for, for, the, for, this, on the same, for the same purpose, and that's yep. to em, empower people to be better, you know? And then yeah, and, yeah, and exactly. through that we bettering. Because we're, we're the Davids next uh, against the chemical giants and you know the regulatory process that these guys went through we're all CDFA refugees I call them CDFU <laughs> all right and um, we, we can't afford where our businesses are too small that we can't afford to just lawyer up if we lawyered up we'd spend more doing that than we do on the products we try to craft by hand for you using low energy intensive processes to give you a superior final end product that flat out works Success leaves clues. Follow the clues. Follow the OA clues right here, man. Thank you, Eric. This is awesome. Nice. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate you I coming really by. I want you guys to check more of this out. I'm so glad that I completed my mission, that I actually got some meaningful content here today. You really helped with that process. Oh, now, now, now I can answer to the wife, you know. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Um, before we close up shops, talking about that regulatory process, describe to us how you single-handedly took on CDFA and apparently you got them to actually commit to creating a new category? Is that what you're saying? That's correct. So normal fertilizers of MPK value are derived from a synthetic or a like land mineral based uh, process, which is identifiable. You read the back of any fertilizer, it's going to say derived from right. and state exactly what, what what is what is comprised of um, normal organic fertilizers are like bone meal, feather meal, uh -huh. fish meal, blood meal, you name it. So ours reads a uh, blood meal is gross. It comes from factory farms. It's, you know what? And, and if we're peeling back the layers of what, truly what organic means, the that's not usually not an organic cow. That's the exactly blood. that cow's being pumped with with hormones and antibiotics and God knows what chemicals. The, the feed that the cow is given is what you're getting from the blood. Yeah. And then so we were um, we have written derived from microbial fermentation byproducts. So we're getting the nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus from this microbial source, which we're the only only fertilizer on the shelf to state that, you know, and this technology is brand new into the, you know. It's, it's a revolution. Yeah, it really is. It's, it's, it's revolutionary fertilizer, and we're blessed to be able to have this technology and to be able to give it to the cannabis industry and, and bring it to the growers. You and know? they suffered through regulatory hell to bring you such a product. Like you said, pages of documentation. Right? Absolutely, yeah. It was yeah. no small feat to get it approved. We're even working from state to state, you know, mm -hmm. to get it approved. It is 100% organic. It's going to be marked as 100% organic, but it's that's even that's going to take a little time before oh, yeah. they give it the stamp. Oh, yeah. Well, getting that OAM label is brutal. We're all that. We're all refugees from that. Yeah. yeah but it, we can guarantee it is. Yeah, it's yeah. going to take a while in the process to get yeah. it done. I can guarantee it is, too, having tasted the, the, the pink dust. Amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks again. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.